Piggy, perch. Big wings. Big days. Come. Touch. Big wings. Hi everyone, this is John and you're watching Birds of Cebu, a channel dedicated to aviculture, avian behaviorism, and avian companionship. And now we are at the third part of How to Train a Bird, the six-part series on training your birds. And for today's part, we're going to cover on the actual training setup. So we already know the how to train ourselves as trainer. We know now how to possibly read bird body language. Now we're going to cover on actual training. And we're going to start with enumerating the things that you need to begin with your training. So for me with Iggy, what I want to do is create an environment that is um, not distracting, something effective. And you can see here that Iggy is already very ready to train because this is our usual setup. So what we have is a T-stand. On my hand is a clicker. Treats in my pocket so that I can easily reach out for them and I don't have to keep going back and forth getting the treats. And of course, um, I also have my, I have my target stick which as you can see, as I bring it into a frame, Iggy's already very excited. He knows exactly what to do with it. Iggy touch. So prior to training, make sure that you've got everything in place. Don't wait until you have to pick up these things in the middle of the training because you want the training to flow easily. You want everything to be at a pace that's comfortable, at the same time, less distractions. Because the more you control the external environment, the more you control the things that you can, then you're able to also manage expectations. The problem with a lot of people doing training and not considering their environment and all the materials involved is that every time something changes, they notice that their bird no longer listens. And a lot of it is because the bird isn't comfortable or is suddenly um, distracted by the change of environment. So make sure that you have things in place which makes the bird comfortable for training. So when doing training, what you want to do is also set an objective as what you want to achieve at the end of the training. Any touch? Because if you do not have an objective and you're just throwing around thinking that I'm going to teach them all the kind of tricks that I want them to learn, then you're doomed to fail. The idea of training is that you have an objective, no matter how simple it is, and you try to achieve that objective. For example, in this case, what I want Iggy to do is to refresh on his basic skills. For example, right now he just left the perch. I want him to go back to the perch. I've taught him this skill, which is perch. Good bird, Iggy boy. However, if you're dealing with a bird that hasn't said, let, uh, hasn't learned any tricks, what you want to do is figure out one simple thing that you want to achieve for that time. For example, for me, with a lot of birds, especially if th those that you want to teach something without having to do any form of touch or contact, what I do is do the target training. Iggy touch. So you want the bird to be able to respond to your cue and you build this kind of relationship. Right now, it's quite easy with Iggy because there's already an established communication. There's an established understanding that if I had the target stick and we're going to do target training, he's going to get treats. And you also understand what the clicker means. Now, the clicker training part, we're going to cover that on the fourth part of how to train a bird. But right now, we're going to cover on... <laughs> Iggy's just really excited. Right now, we're going to cover on establishing your whole training setup. So make sure that you have a T-stand. I'd like to emphasize the importance of a T-stand perch because having a T-stand allows you to control the environment of where your bird is going to be. If you're going to have the training on top of the cage, there's more space to move around and distract the bird. Big wings. 
So it's kind of difficult making this video while doing the training session because Iggy's got this expectation, I'm on the T-stand, we're going to do training. And I like that kind of expectation build-up because this T-stand becomes an environmental learning. And he knows every time he's on top of the T-stand, he's going to learn something. So find a T-stand that you're going to be using frequently. In my case, what's very simple, I have a speaker stand, the one that's used for loudspeakers and audio systems, and I mounted a wood on top of it. If you don't want to screw it, you can probably have some zip ties and wrap it around the mount, and you've got a stable, a stable T-stand. Just make sure that it's something stable that it doesn't wiggle whenever there's a huge push or there's a wind blowing, something that's stable for the bird so that it feels secure and, it doesn't, and the bird doesn't feel scared of the T-stand. Step up. Now, another thing that you should also remember about having a T-stand is that it should be something that you can easily move around. Having something that's fixed on the ground will be difficult because if one day you do want to transfer the T-stand to try to try and experiment on new environments, it will be a struggle. So have something that you can move around. Step up. Now for the target stick, this is rather fancy. I have an elder wand replica, but what you can use is just a simple chopstick. So for example, touch. Iggy understands the routine, he knows what's going on, but personally, I just like using a very special target stick. Right? Big wings. So Iggy is particularly motivated today because he's actively responding to my cues. But don't get discouraged if a bird doesn't really respond to your cues immediately despite the new trainings before. There could be several factors like external distractions, probably dogs barking outside, somebody passing by. These little things can affect the bird's mindset. Another thing that you could also consider is, is your bird full? You want to feel the crop if there's anything inside it. I've noticed that birds that are full may not be as motivated to train. But depending on the bird, there are some birds that despite their fullness, they're still excited to train. In this case, what I want to do is make sure that Iggy is number one, not full. Number two, he's comfortable and well rested. Tired birds don't want to train. And number three, he has this mindset that is focused on the training, which I've established from several training sessions, and it didn't happen overnight. So some of you might wonder, how long does it take to train a bird? In my case, I don't really have a fixed time as to how long I'm training with Iggy. I usually feel it out, and when I see that he's no longer interested to train, or he's starting to look at other things, or is no longer focused, then I end the training even before that happens. Usually there are already some signs. For example, he's no longer as quickly responsive to the cue, or when I place him back on the perch, he's no longer looking at me. That's usually the sign that says, hey, we've got to end this, and that's the end our session is successful. Because the whole point of the training session is that you want to end with success. So what is the average training time for training a bird? I would say around 10 to 15 minutes, even 5 minutes if you're still new with the whole training thing. A good 5 minutes of just trying to interact with a bird, build this rapport, build this conversation where, hey, if, I give you, if you do something, I give you a treat and you're happy. Here, for example, wave. So you want to build that kind of rapport and even as simple as giving the treat and clicking, building this kind of understanding is really good training. Now, for birds that already have that kind of understanding with their trainers, I'd say a good 10 to 15 minutes would be good training time. Do not spend too much time training to the point the bird gets bored. You want the training experience to be exciting and also positive. That is why with Iggy, when he knows it's training time, he's really positive and he's really responsive. Perch. So some final reminders when going through your training. It helps that you know exactly what your bird is very interested in. For example, a particular treat or food that they find very important or very pleasurable. For example, I know Iggy loves his sunflower seeds, but I do not incorporate that with his main diet. He also loves bananas, and I also don't incorporate that in his main diet. So if you're going to choose a particular treat, make sure it's not something that's currently on his diet. 
you want to make sure that it's something that is exclusive to the training session. So that if it's exclusive to the training session, he knows that he's only going to get it through doing all these things. So make sure that you got something that's exclusive and of high value. So by pulling out that food, if you know if it's already currently part of your diet, even if it's your favorite food, by pulling it out, it increases its value. So increasing the treat value also helps motivate the bird to really work for it. And for those of you who are feeling frustrated with their training, they think that it's not working or the bird just doesn't listen, I'd like to suggest that you try to take a video of how you're doing your training. Why? Because you can take this video, upload it in the internet, and share it with online groups, and they can, and other trainers can give you suggestions as to what's going on. They can probably see it from your body language, or how your bird is responding, or how you're communicating with your bird. All these things can be determined by a third party. In fact, for me, how it became more effective when training my bird is because I took videos of myself and I tried to observe what I was doing because sometimes what you're doing at that moment, you couldn't possibly notice. So it helps to take a step back and look at your whole setup, how you're responding to the bird, how you're reading the bird's body language, and from there, you can say, hey, this is what I gotta do, this is what I gotta change. So it's not enough that you're just studying the bird. It also it helps to study yourself externally. And lastly, what I think would be a very effective training session is when you're enjoying the whole experience with your bird. Don't think of it as, I gotta teach this bird to do something. Think of it as, at the end of this day, I will get to learn more about my bird than I did before. Little nuances, little preferences, things that you know makes your bird a unique animal. So knowing these things will make you a better trainer not because you taught the bird something but because you learned from your bird. And as we say in the Cebu Indian trainers, in order to train a bird, you must let the bird train you. And that ends our third part for how to train a bird. I hope to see you for the last three videos of how to train a bird six part series in Birds of Cebu. Do like and follow on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok so that you can have more updates on how to train a bird series. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again in the future. Thank you and goodbye.